Category 5 TV with Hillary Rumble, Krista Wells, Eric Kidd, Rachel Zhu, and Robbie Ferguson. And now, here's a clip from Category 5 Technology TV. Brought to you by Freeplay Human Powered Devices, cat5.tv slash freeplay. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble. Hillary, I don't know if I have mentioned it to you before, but I kind of saw that coming with Ubuntu and Canonical. Did you? Just that drive with, ever since I've, you know, they've introduced Unity and taken mm -hmm. over with Unity, it's really felt touchscreen-ish. Oh yes, I do remember you saying that. Yeah. yeah, the interface looked very is not it's, like totally. It's designed for this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Right? I, I do remember you saying that. Yes. But the problem with that is it feels really awkward to me as a mouse user. You're like, mm, I just want to poke my screen, not use yeah. my mouse. But it just yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't be comfortable. It wouldn't work mm -hmm. even if I had a touch screen. Now there are some nice devices out there. I think in particular there's the HP Touch Smart, for example, right? And just thinking. Touch Smart. I'm just going to do a quick search. Yeah, sure. The, re the reason that I'm thinking about this particular device mm -hmm. is uh, Gadwell was mentioning in the chat room that it just isn't practical because of the, the form factor of these things. But their, their device actually lays right down, so it almost becomes a, a desktop style screen, right? So yeah. you're, you're touching on, mm -hmm. on here. So then I can see that working. But then you're taking up this huge footprint on your desk, yeah, right? True. Versus uh, a mouse, mm -hmm. or in my case, I use a trackball. So I only, uh, I literally okay, only use okay, this yeah. much footprint on my desk. Hmm. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. I, I don't want a touchscreen interface. Yeah. Don't like it. Don't hmm. want it. I don't have the device for it. But that Canonical has announced Mark Shuttleworth at uh, at the Ubuntu uh, Developer Summit mm -hmm. today. Uh, and yesterday had mentioned that uh, that they are indeed pushing toward mobile devices. But I don't have that. <laughs> so tonight we're going yeah. to fall back in love with Ubuntu mm -hmm. and make it work for our mouse. Okay. For our desktop computer, the way that you expect it to, the way that you want it to when you're using your computer. Because I don't know about you, but that's what I use. I mean, wow. I love my, my mobile device, too. I want to see Ubuntu on my mobile device. I would love to see Ubuntu on my tablet. But I don't want the tablet interface on my desktop. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I have Ubuntu 11.10. This is the latest version the very of latest. Ubuntu. The very latest. You'll see right out of the box, I've got Ubuntu and Ubuntu 2D. All right, so let's log in. With a recently changed password. With a recently changed password. <laughs> Thank you. To avoid. <laughs> Here it comes. So you're going to see exactly what I'm saying. There we go. Okay. Okay. So imagine, okay, yeah, I'm going to be able to reach up with my finger and touch all these buttons here. It's got a, a real... It's, I've talked about it on the show before. It's designed for touchscreen, and it's mm. obvious that it's designed for touchscreen big bold buttons which is fine but it's not designed to be used by somebody who's using a mouse mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into my terminal because tonight what I'm actually gonna do I want to I want to walk you through the steps now okay. of course the next version of perfect boom 2 is going to actually do all this for you there's gonna be a little uh, toggle switch that allows you to oh, wow. basically convert 11.10 into um, a, a gnome 2 style desktop based on uh, an older version of Ubuntu. But what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how this is done and what it is that we're actually doing. Yeah. Um, Gadwill, we're not indeed switching to GNOME 2.3.2 or 2.32. We want to actually stay with GNOME 3. We're not going to downgrade your computer. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to make your computer compatible with this interface, okay? We're not going to use GNOME Shell. We're not going to do any of that stuff. So here I am in the terminal, okay? on my brand new, out of the box, I haven't touched anything, it's just, it's got its updates and that's it. This is Ubuntu 11.10. So I'm gonna go, first of all, sudo, mm. oh, I do have mouse, or er, keyboard, there we go. It's just a little slow. Hello. sudo apt-get update is the first thing you want to run. That's going to get your up-to-date repository information. Enter your password as necessary. There we go. It's gone through my updates. 
It's going to get those off the internet for me. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get the ability to take Ubuntu back to a GNOME 2 style interface. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to use session fallback. So that's where the fallback comes in. Session fallback uh, is uh, going to allow us basically to flip that switch when we first turn on our computer. It, it turns into a session. So, and it's actually what's, uh, what you're going to recognize if you are installing GNOME Shell. Similar kind of thing. But we're going to do this with as minimal you know, amount of stuff as possible. When I type it, it <laughs> seems to be taking a moment to get in there. You are faster than the computer. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Okay, so sudo apt-get with a dash, install, and then gnome session. There should be a dash there. Let's fix it. There we go. Okay, so you can see that now. sudo apt-get install gnome session fallback. All right, nice and simple. This is going to give us about 40 megs worth of stuff. And uh, once that's in, we're going to be able to switch our session over to uh, GNOME Classic without having to install Ubuntu Shell, or GNOME Shell, pardon me. There we go. 40.2 megs of additional stuff. You'll notice that we're, we're going to get the a la carte menu editor, uh, as well as a couple of other things, but we're not getting the full out GNOME Shell. It's going to be really quite minimalist, and it's only 40.2 megs. So we're going to say yes to that. We're going to let that go. And again, it's actually installing all this stuff, Hillary, right off yeah. the internet. I mm -hmm. don't need disks. This is uh, where it really comes in handy to have that yeah, high-speed internet seriously. connection. right? So this is going to go through and get all that stuff for us. That's pretty good. Pretty good. It's moving pretty, pretty good speed. <laughs> This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online at Category5.tv. We welcome your questions, and your questions are what direct the uh, show's content. Mm -hmm. Category 5, uh, you can email us live at Category5.tv. Please, send me emails, because mm -hmm. I love reading them. Any co-host does, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, do it. Just, just do it. All right, that's coming along. Getting the panel applet. This is live. This is happening in real time. So you'll yes. see exactly, <laughs> pardon me, exactly how long this takes. And how to go about doing it. There we go. It yeah, is it's done. Yeah. It's uh, deferred some processing. There we go. Okay, so now let's simply log out of our computer. Click on the, uh, the gear up at the top left. I think I'm probably working this thing to death. I'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to close that, see if that makes any difference. There we go. Okay, click on the gear, and then go log out. Are you sure you want to close all programs and log out of the computer? I'm going to say, yeah, log well, out. I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's what we want to do. Here we go. All right. So now you're going to see that if we click here, we have GNOME Classic. That's what that gave us. So switch it. Okay, so I've switched that to GNOME Classic. We're mm -hmm. no longer selecting Ubuntu. Right. All right, enter your password and hit enter. And here we go. So this is step one. This is going to get us to that kind of classic style Ubuntu desktop, okay? And remember, we didn't have to install GNOME Shell here. Okay, now we're going to go up to our name, click on it, and go System Settings. Once we're in there, we're going to go into Appearance. And now this is a little bit of a workaround. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my theme down at the bottom here, okay? Change it from Ambiance to Radiance. And that's going to get rid of the black and just turn it to a, a nice kind of okay, gradient white. Okay, So that works. Okay, now I'm going to close out of that. Now I'm going to go back into terminal because we're going to learn the terminal tonight. Okay. And there's two things left that I want to install. So I'm going to go sudo apt-get install. You're going to love this. human dash 
theme. Okay, I'm going to do this on two li on one line. So I'm going to install the theme, and then I'm going to install gconf-editor. Okay, so we're going to get that original human theme from Ubuntu, and we're going to get the gconf editor so that we can edit our G configuration. There Perfect. we go. This is going to give us four megs of data. All right. Much better response time now. I much prefer the human theme to the zombie theme. Yeah, you know, something or about the zombie theme. theme or Ambiance kind of feels zombie-ish with all the darkness. Yes. So It's done. All right. Beauty. So that's done and done. So what I want to do is now I'm going to type the words g conf dash editor. Okay. So now this is my configuration editor. I'm going to go into apps and then we want to find metacity or meta city. Hello. That's telling me, see, this is what's neat about when you run something through the terminal. So you can see the actual errors. Yeah. And it says that there is a, uh, a problem there, index value too large. Just in case, I'm going to log out and then log back in because I haven't done that since installing the theme and gconf config. I'm not having to reboot the whole computer. You'll notice that GNOME Classic is now set as my default, so I'm always oh, going to get yeah. that. G. Siegel thinks that I like to live on the wild side. And I would agree. Yeah? Definitely. If you'd like, if you want to use the, inter uh, the GUI at this point, you can just go down to System Tools, Configuration Editor. There we go. All right, a log out and a log in did it for us. Perfect. Now I've brought up Apps, Metacity, Windows Users. You'll recognize this. It looks very much like a registry. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Scroll down. And you'll see one called Theme. All right. I'm going to double click on the word Radiance. Remember we changed it to Radiance? Well, that's good because now GDK theme is set to Radiance, but now we want our Metacity theme set to Human. Human. With an uppercase H. If I hit Enter, see what happened? Oh. It looks very much like the original Ubuntu Human theme. I see. Okay. So now there's one thing that, uh, that's left to do here, and that's these bad boys. So scroll up a little ways, okay, and you see button layout. Mm -hmm. Double click on the value at the right, and we want to change that order. So first of all, we want to put the colon, which is the, the name of the program, and then these are going to be relational to that. So I'm going to highlight the word close and cut it, and I'm going to paste that at the end, but I'm going to add a comma after maximize. All right. Hmm. So now, and now I've got to delete that last colon because that's where it was, okay? So now it looks like colon, minimize, maximize, close. When I hit enter, oh. okay, I've moved those. Now you'll see that there's one other thing missing from the top left-hand side, okay? So before that colon, I'm going to add the word menu, okay? and hit enter and you'll see that now I have oh sweet your standard menu just as you would have okay so now the final button layout says menu colon minimize comma maximize comma close full stop no period okay so that's all there is to that mm -hmm. now final step is basically Okay, we've got the theme, we've got all that working. Let's just kind of finalize it. And we're going to do that with something that's already included with 11.04 Ubuntu. We're going to go straight to another orange theme, grab those leaves, close out of that. And now, if you bring up your Nautilus window, you'll see this feels much more like home, much more like the old style Ubuntu, <laughs> much more like, you know, GNOME 2. But yet we're still looking at GNOME 3, believe it or not. We're still looking at Ubuntu 11.10. You're still going to get all your Ubuntu 11.10 updates. You still have access to Ubuntu Software Center. You still have the ability to install the applications that you can get on Ubuntu 11.10 with Unity, just that you're not trapped into that Unity interface. You now have 
a much more familiar interface. A couple of things are a little bit different. You'll see that the clock is centered up here. That can be moved. You'll see that uh, system settings is still on my name and shut down, log out, and restart is under shutdown as well. When you reboot your computer, everything's going to remain. Everything mm -hmm. is hard set now and you're not going to lose those settings if you reboot. So that is now your interface. You can go onto the internet, find yourself a, a great wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper. Uh, a good place to start is gnome-look.org and there you will find some GTK licensed uh, desktop wallpapers mm. and themes and things like that. So that's just to get you started making <laughs> Ubuntu 11.10 feel a little bit more like the old style Ubuntu and that's what's going to help you to fall back in love with <laughs> Ubuntu with 11.10. Oh, kick it at old school. Old school. Your old school love. Indeed. Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.